Hey there, math fans. Today, we're going to talk about the formal definition of a limit. This might sound complicated, but don't worry. We'll break it down into bite-sized pieces such that anyone can understand. So in calculus, a limit refers to the value that a function approaches as the input values get infinitely close to a certain value. It represents the boundary that a function cannot surpass, and is called a limit because it's the point beyond which the function cannot go. In other words, it's a way to describe what happens to a function as the input gets closer and closer to a certain value without actually plugging in that value. Now, the formal definition of a limit might sound intimidating at first, but don't worry, it's actually pretty simple. It goes like this. The limit of a function f of x as x approaches a value c is l if for every positive number epsilon, there exists a positive number delta such that if the distance between x and c, i.e. the absolute value of x minus c is less than delta, then the distance between f of x and l, i.e. the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. Let's unpack this definition a bit. The key idea here is that we want to make sure that the function f of x gets arbitrarily close to l as x gets arbitrarily close to c. To do this, we pick any positive number epsilon that we want, and then we find a positive number delta that makes sure the distance between x and c is less than delta, which in turn makes sure that the distance between f of x and l is less than epsilon. In other words, we want to show that no matter how close we want to get to L, we can always get close enough by picking the right value of delta. This is what we mean by a limit. Let's look at an example. Say we have the function f of x equals 2x plus 1, and we want to find the limit as x approaches 2. We want to show that as x gets closer and closer to 2, the function gets closer and closer to some number L. So let's say we pick epsilon to be 0.1. We want to find a delta such that if the distance between x and 2 is less than delta, then the distance between f of x and l, which we don't know yet, is less than 0.1. If we do the math, we can actually find that delta equaling 0.05 works. This means that if the distance between x and 2 is less than 0.05, then the distance between f of x and l is less than 0.1. And we keep making delta smaller and smaller if we want to get even closer to l. So for example, if we plug in 1.95, which is within 0.05 of x into x, f of x is 4.9. And if we keep plugging in values for x that are within 0.05 of 2, we notice that f of x gets closer and closer to 5, like so. For values from the left of 2, we have... And for values from the right of 2, we have... Furthermore, if you notice, our values for f of x are all within 0.1 unit of the absolute value of f of x minus l. 4.9, and 5.02 are all between 4.9 and 5.1 and points included, of course. So as we keep on choosing values of x that are within 0.05 of 2, the absolute value of f of x minus l remains within 0.1 and gets closer and closer to 5. So in this case, we can say that the limit of f of x as x approaches 2 is 5. And that's how the formal definition of a limit works. Okay, I hope this video has been helpful in demystifying the formal definition of a limit. Remember, it's all about making sure the function gets arbitrarily close to some value as the input gets arbitrarily close to some other value. Thanks for watching.